<clears throat> All right, got my notes, got my costume, got my new gun. I think I'm ready to go. Holy crap, the fallen are here! <laughs> Woo! I can't believe this is my job. Hello there, fellow maker. Oh, hold on one second. Hey, hello there, fellow maker. Welcome down to Prop 3D. I'm Bill, and today I'm going to show you how I 3D printed and painted and made this Suros sidearm. This is Dead Man Walking from Destiny 2. Also, it's on an airsoft gun, so it still shoots and does everything you would want an airsoft to do, but it's a Destiny gun. I don't know about you, but I've been playing a ton of Destiny 2, and when I got Dead Man Walking in the game, I immediately thought I could build it onto an airsoft gun that I already owned. The biggest challenge here, of course, was designing all of these parts so that they looked true to the game, but also so that they fit snugly and securely on the airsoft gun while allowing it to still do everything it needed to do. Now, if you want to dive deeper into my prototyping process, I have another video for that on our second channel. Once I had everything designed and 3D modeled, the pieces were printed out in ABS plastic at a 0.15 millimeter layer height on my Ultimaker. This is using the new enclosure that I just built. And I'll tell you what, it worked out great on its maiden voyage and the prints came out damn near perfect. To attach all of the printed parts to the gun, I threaded some of the plastic using a tap or appropriately sized screws. This worked out pretty well, but I'm sure these parts will wear out quickly, so for future revisions I may include more metal hardware wherever possible. Once I was sure that all the parts fit correctly, I started cleaning up the prints. Some of the pieces had bits of the brim left over. Those were removed using needle files. After that, every single surface was sanded down to a 100 grit finish. This removed as many of the layer lines as possible. And I'll tell you what, the ABS is definitely way easier to sand than the PLA that I'm used to. To finish off those pesky layer lines, I sprayed all of my parts with one or two good coats of an automotive filler spray paint. When that was dry, you guessed it, I sanded everything again. This time I went with a 220 grit sandpaper. Then I buffed all the parts with a fine steel wool to smooth out the surface. After that, everything was hit with a normal primer spray paint and left to dry. All of the painting in this gun was done with my airbrush. The smaller under barrel parts were all base coated with a dark gunmetal Tamiya paint. The barrel got a bit of their silver chrome. And the rest of the parts got my own mixture of several colors that turned into a rather nice off white. This white was the majority of the paint on the gun. All of the parts got a couple of good layers of this base paint and then were left to dry. The next layer of detail required a lot of masking, starting with a Suros logo stencil that I cut out on my vinyl cutter. The rest of the masking was done with Tamiya tape and frog tape. These masking tapes were great for delicate work around small details. I also used a brush to dab on a little bit of masking latex to create a chipped paint effect in the next layer of color. That color was red that I darkened with just a touch of brown paint. I sprayed that red on every surface that was exposed, counting on my masking to take care of all of that fine detail. Again, everything got two good coats of paint and was left to dry. When that red was good and dry, I could peel away all of that tedious masking tape. This might be my favorite part of the process, especially peeling away that logo. It just makes it look super legit. After that, I used my finger to rub off the areas that had masking latex on them. This peeled away the red and left a chipped look down to the white paint. A couple of other other spots needed just a little bit of paint so they were masked off and sprayed with more of that silver chrome paint. The front sight and the top rail both got this treatment. To protect all of my work so far, I used my airbrush to apply a couple of good coats of clear paint. Finally, it was time to start assembling the parts. The under barrel pieces were stuck to one another using super glue. I did the same thing for the front part of the gun. The hex screws hold it snug to the gun but are mostly cosmetic. The last part to glue down was the barrel. To add some wear and tear to the finish, I hit the edges with some steel wool. This chewed through the paint down to the silver ABS plastic. For some subtle grime, I went with weathering powder pigments. Think of this like makeup, but for props. I used a brush to apply it to the deep crevices of the gun. Then I wiped a bunch of it away with a wet paper towel until I had a soft, 
slightly used look all over my gun. To set those powders, I hit everything with one more good layer of clear paint. I also brushed that dirt powder all over the handle of my airsoft gun. I wanted to make sure it looked just as weathered as my 3D printed parts when I attached them together. To hide that extreme logo on the side of the gun, I covered it with some aluminum tape. This was dulled just a little bit using some steel wool. Finally, I could assemble the completed kit. The cosmetic slide screws onto a 3D printed rail that's attached to the actual slide on the airsoft gun. The front of the gun slides onto the bottom rail of the airsoft gun and is locked in with another screw. The under barrel attachment clamps onto the body of the gun with another pair of screws. Everything fits nice and snug and the airsoft gun still functions the way it should. I gotta tell you, I am super stoked with how this turned out. Everything on here still comes apart and can be completely disassembled from the airsoft gun in case I need to replace or repair any of these parts or in case I wanna use this airsoft gun for a different Destiny gun mod. One thing to note though is the durability. This is all ABS plastic, it's fairly durable. Those screw holes that I threaded are probably gonna wear out over time, especially if I unscrew and screw them in a bunch. So I have no idea how long this is gonna last. I don't think it's durable enough to use for a lot of like airsoft, like competitive play. But if I break apart, I can just 3D print it again, paint it and stick it on. Oh, and another thing, uh, don't bring a prop like this to a convention. I mean, most cons have rules anyway about bringing airsoft guns. So of course, check your local laws and your convention rules before you go traipsing about with a prop that can fire actual projectiles. I would consider this more of a photo shoot or video shoot or hang on the wall type of prop. This was an incredibly fun challenge. Trying to get everything to fit on here and still function and still look like something from the game was really tricky, but I had a lot of fun doing it. I've been looking for an excuse to do an airsoft mod like this for a long time, so I'm finally happy to have kind of gotten this out of my system. Who am I kidding? I'm playing so much Destiny 2 and there's a ton more guns I want to make. Plus, it's a good excuse to buy more airsoft guns. Well, anyway, I do hope that you've enjoyed going on this little journey with me. If you are curious about any of the tools or materials that I used on this build, those will be listed in the description. And of course, if you've got a question about this build or anything else I'm working on, please drop it down in the comments. I try my best to get back to as many of those as I can. Hey, thank you so much for watching and checking out our videos. This was a ton of fun. I hope you join me on our next one. If you've got a prop or project that you're working on, you wanna share it with me, drop me a line and a picture over on Twitter. I'm at Chinbeard. That's all I've got for you today. Thank you so much for hanging out. I'll see you in the next build. All right, got my notes, got my costume, got my new gun, and I think I'm ready to go. Holy crap, the fallen are here! <laughs> Is that all the air I got? <laughs> Hey, thanks for watching. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe so you don't miss any of our new weekly prop and costume tutorial videos. For more goodies, head over to our website where you'll find blueprints, tutorial books, articles, and more. We also have a second channel for our Q&A show and extra behind the scenes videos. Thanks again and happy crafting.